So in this video, I'm going to teach you everything that you need to know to get started with the new Niagara Fluid System inside UE5. Before we start with the video, I would like to give a huge shout out to all the people who support the channel on Patreon. So thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot. And if you guys want to support the channel, I'll leave a link to my Patreon page down in the description. Okay, so to get started, I've made a basic scene. So the first thing that we are going to do here is we are going to go to the content browser, right click, and we are going to create a Niagara particle system. So if you don't know, Niagara is the new particle system. So previously we had cascade and cascade is now deprecated. So it's completely replaced by this new system. So as you can see, we have four options here. We're going to select the second option. So we are going to create this Niagara system with the existing template. So we're going to select one of these particle systems. So I'm going to select this one right here. And you need to give a name to your particle system object. There we go. After that, you can click and drag it in your scene. And just like that, we are getting a very cool fluid simulation. So I'm going to position this somewhat like this. After that, I'm going to go under the create panel right here. And we are going to create a object. So you can create any object right here. I'm going to create a sphere. So I want this sphere to collide with the fluid simulation. To make a static mesh collide with a fluid simulation, you need to select that static mesh, search for tags, and under the advanced tags, we need to add a tag called collider. So you need to spell this properly. Uh, this is case sensitive, so spell it properly. And as you can see, after you add that actor tag, our sphere is colliding with this fluid simulation. So that is how easy it is. Next, let's select the fire simulation and let's take a look at all of the settings for this. So under the Niagara, you can see that we have a reference, a Niagara system reference. Next under override parameters, we have three options here. So this is for collision. So these are different collision objects. So this fluid simulation can collide with the geometry collection. So if you have an alembic uh, scene or an alembic cache, it can collide with that as well. Next, it can collide with physics asset. So if a skeletal mesh has a physics asset, it can interact with that as well. And next we have static mesh. So the sphere that we added is a static mesh. And under the static mesh, you can see that we have the tag and it's set to collider by default. So this is why we had to add that collider tag to our object. After that, we have some lighting options. So if you have a direction light and if you want that to affect uh, this simulation, you can select that. So once I select my direction light and if you rotate the direction light, you can see that our lighting is changing and uh, this is really cool. After that, we have the option for resolution. So how this works is basically any volumetric uh, rendering system is voxel based. So you can think of a voxel as a pixel a uh, but in 3D. So for example, if I set this to a low number, you can see that our fire simulation gets all uh, blocky and it doesn't look that good. So this is basically the density of the voxel grid. So the higher this number is, the higher quality simulation you are going to get. Now, we are going to open up the Niagara system itself. Once you open this, you will see a new editor. This is the Niagara particle system editor. So we have three nodes here. So the first node is called the particle source emitter. Let's turn that off. And you can see that our simulation disappears. The next node is called gas controls emitter. So if you turn that off, you can see that our simulation disappears as well. But now if you turn on the sprite renderer in the first node, so basically these white colored particles are the source of the fluid emission. So basically this first node provides information to the second node and then the second node emits volumetric meshes and simulates the fluid system. So if you take a look at the second node under the renderer, you can see that we have some mesh renderer components. So this is rendering volumetric meshes and that's using basically some advanced uh, ray matching or uh, rendering techniques. So you should just know that the first node is just providing particle information. And the second node is taking that information and rendering volumetric meshes. 
and simulating the fluid simulation. To understand this better, let's replace this system with our own particles. So I'm going to move the first node to the left hand side and you can right click to add an emitter. Now you can add any emitter you like, but we are going to add a fountain emitter. So what we need to do is now we need to use this particle system as the fluid source. So to do that, we are going to copy this component. So this component is called set fluid source attributes. And you're going to paste this component under the particles update. After that, you can turn on the second node and under the second node properties, under the emitter name, you need to specify that emitter name. So again, this is case sensitive. So just type your emitter name there. In my case, it's fountain. But now, as you can see, we don't have any particles in the scene. So this is a very common issue that people run into. So at the moment, the fluid system only works with GPU emitters. So if you select the fountain node, you can see that it's a CPU emitter. So it's using the CPU for the simulation. But we need to change the SIM target from CPU to GPU. And you will get a warning up there. So you need to turn on fixed bounds for that. And now if you play this particle system, as you can see, we have successfully replaced the old emitter with a new fountain emitter. So I hope you guys got a lot of insight on the new Niagara fluid simulation. I mean, this is pretty cool. And I'm also still like experimenting with a lot of settings. So you can expect a lot of videos on this as well. If you like this video, leave a like down below. Subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And yeah, that's it. I'm going to see you in the next video.